afternoon all I quite fancy looking at a classic game and showing any insights with you uh, so Mikhail Botvinnik against Lajos Portish Monaco 1968 this is a highly collected game on chessgames.com which I don't believe we've covered before on this channel I think we should watch out for access paths to the opponent's king so make that the theme of the game to look out for c4 quiet positional start the English opening very popular nowadays Portish reacted with a kind of reverse Sicilian defense position so we have a Sicilian defense now in reverse and we have the accelerated in effect dragon variation the accelerated fincetto of this bishop to exert pressure on this diagonal black liberates with d5 so it still is like a reverse Sicilian defense bishop e6 supporting that knight now on d5 knight f3 so something has to be done about e5 it's protected castles knight b6 so it looks like a kind of accelerated dragon but black dare not play moves like this unless it's too slow to try and castle queenside and hack white instead black's intention is usually to castle on the king side so after d3 bishop e7 preparing to castle king side but now what are white's trumps here it's this c file is the first trump the first access route with c5 as potential outpost square so a move like bishop e3 knight e4 knight a4 to c5 would emphasize and celebrate the c5 square potentially we've got an exchange sack situation on c6 to take on e5 as well which would be thematic in sicilian dragons but particularly so if, if black would have castled queen side but these are the things to bear in mind at the moment a3 okay what does that play in any strategic plan it might play a role of b4 and bishop b2 and then knight e4 and later to c5 or a4 to c5 a5 clamping down on that b4 now it, you might think well maybe b3 has been slightly weakened okay bear that in mind bishop e3 though pointing at that c5 square and also potentially threatening to double black's pawns but after castles black doesn't really care about that no it would weaken white's dark squares black would maybe getting pressure on the c file even so actually Mikhail plays knight a4 still heading maybe for that c5 square now positionally putting pressure on the c file he's more interested in black you know maybe taking it and, and getting queen a a4 queen b5 with you know menacing pressure maybe on b7 and e5 takes queen a4 okay you could consider black slightly uncomfortable here because look at white's rooks they've got a beautiful c file to play with has the black rooks got any file to play with here not really so black's a little bit more passive with his rooks white's already connected rooks and maybe also queen b5 could be useful in some situations to hit b7 and e5 okay bishop d5 is played and now rook fc1 rook e8 so black might be preparing preparing bishop f8 say and try and maybe get in later a knight d4 idea to try and change the pawn structure to emphasize e2 as a potentially backward pawn on the semi open file that would be black's strategic dream scenario rook c2 simply preparing to, to double rooks but you might think well it's reinforced at the moment what's really the idea behind this surely if the knight's on c6 is this ineffectual okay bishop f8 and black's getting on with preparing something you know like knight d4 in the future to try and change pawn structure rook a c1 again the two rooks now behind the knight how many of us would do this is it because an exchange sack is on the cards not really because bishop takes c6 surely uh, there's no double pawns there's no winning a pawn on e5 e5 is adequately supported in any case so if there's no exchange sack why would Mikhail be doubling rooks on the c6 knight knight b8 seems to set now a tactical trap for black that if rook takes c7 surely this is not possible because black has a tactical uh, resource bishop c6 to interrupt the connection of the rooks protect this rook you know if queen takes c7 there'll be queen e8 but Mikhail in this position does play rook takes c7 has he fallen in 
for a tactical trap here. I don't know how many of you have seen this game before, but this is the point where I want to emphasize now, not just exploitable weaknesses or soft spots, which you could imagine these two in particular, but access paths. If there was an access path via this soft spot, it might be this diagonal. This one, okay, you might imagine queen h4 and knight g5, but at the moment, you know, the queen's protecting. But this diagonal, isn't isn't that absurd? There's a bishop on d5. But that's part of black's tactical trap here to try and win material now. In this position, black tries to win material. What else can he do? In fact, did he need to even retreat that knight to set this trap? It seems a bit of a risky strategy. Maybe there was a better move in this position. But let's explore the game path. Rook takes c7. So the trap seems to be fall fallen straight into bishop c6. So what is Mikhail doing? Well, first, you know, there's a slight weakness of that last move, isn't there? Because now that diagonal, a queen can go to b3 potentially, hitting that soft spot. But the very first thing Mikhail does in this position, can you guess if I give you 10 seconds here? So 10 seconds starting from now, white to play. What does Mikhail Botvinnik do in this position? Okay, okay, he knocks out that bishop. He plays an exchange sack, so he knocks out that bishop. So b takes, and now the rook, is it gonna scurry to b7? No, there's another move here. And he's not going, he's not, I'll rule this out as well for you. So if it's not bishop b6 and rook b7, think creatively now about access paths particularly this, this access path to the king, which could be useful. Pardon me, this one to the king. This is getting difficult to do an arrow. Whoops. Well, anyway, you know what I mean. F7 is a bit vulnerable. So what would you play here? 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, I hope you got the clue. So I'm going to accelerate this. Rook takes F7. Blimey, exchange set, then a rook sack. Brilliant game. He's drawing out the king, isn't he? Can black dare take this? Actually, in the game, he played h6, maybe stunned here. Now, if he took it, then we can imagine queen c4, queen b3 being dangerous. Let's let's say queen c4, because that's maybe it's more useful there in some variations, or is it more useful on b3? So without engine analysis, if rook e6, there's knight g5, so that rules that out. So if the king uh, dared to go to f6, we've got bishop g5, haven't we? Skewing the king and queen. If it dares to go to e7, then again, bishop g5 looks incredibly strong. Just simply winning the queen. But maybe even stronger technically might be another move. But, you know, if bishop c5, if we investigate bishop c5, I'm not sure we're going to discover anything that, that spectacular here with bishop c5, because king d7... Uh, the king might have bishop e7 to, to shield himself and the, the e pawn is, is protected here so i think bishop g5 looks simple and strong here so black didn't want want this any of this he plays actually in this position h6 so how to proceed here okay michael plays rook b7 now he's done a lot of damage it's like Black's moved that dreaded f pawn. He's weakened that diagonal. So either queen c4 or queen b3. And we've got danger built up. Okay. And if rook e7, actually a weakness of the last move, almost, check, might almost win the knight. But it's protected at the moment. So what are the major issues here? What are the major issues and what was played? Queen c8 was played, hitting that rook trying to evict it. Check. We have a check. King h8. You might wonder, queen e6. Okay, queen e6 wasn't played. Uh, that, that's kind of interesting to explore as well. But let's go through the game continuation first. Knight h4 now, very, very dangerous, knight h4 threatening knight g6 and maybe also bringing this bishop into the game on the light squares on this diagonal which is sometimes a classic in things like the Benoni uh, you get this kind of dynamism with, with attacking the opponent's king like this but these weakened 
light squares are very interesting for the access paths. This one and this one. OK, so knight h4. Offering the rook, of course. So another rook sacrifice. So a brilliant move, knight h4. Now, is this enough to bring the king out to h7? Well, we see bishop e4 with numerous threats now. Knight takes f8, discovered check. Knight e7, discovered check. And queen g8 is another idea. So how does black defend this? He plays bishop d6. Check. Knight takes e5, check. Okay, g6, offering another square to the king. So he wasn't interested in playing uh, king h8 there. But in fact, on king h8, knight f7 would win the queen, wouldn't it? Or it would look pretty dangerous for this knight f7 check. If we have this position, knight takes d6 is actually winning the queen anyway. So that's unpalatable. So g6, and we have check. And now a final brilliant move, which really just seals this game as a masterpiece of attack from what was seemingly a quiet opening, which I guess many people... Uh, would not even consider c4 as part of their opening repertoire. But this, this game really just shows how attacking the English opening can be if you can play like this, if you can get to the opponent's king on these more subtle diagonals. So what was the killer move here if I give you 10 seconds starting from now? So 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, bishop takes h6. Just tearing apart the defence. Black resigns here. Now let's see if he had carried on. Well, it looks pretty horrendous actually. If King H8, Knight F7 that looks devastating as before, and the, bishop, the bishops are really cutting off the king here on those two key squares. We don't want to run into that one again. If takes, then I believe Queen H6 looks pretty crushing. If nothing else, if nothing else. White could win the queen and attack that rook. So say uh, king king f6. Well, it's probably mating now in a more clinical uh, continuation. But at minimum, this queen takes b7 anyway, hitting that rook. That's 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 sufficient as well. And both rooks are actually attacked here. So it seems you know bishop h6. Okay, king f6. We can try that seems far too dangerous to do this. So king f6, maybe white can simply just take that rook on e8 or queen h4. Let's turn on an engine here. Queen f4 is the most clinical continuation here. Check. Now if I say king e6, then bishop f7, and that's winning the queen. Okay, let's turn off that engine. So it's it's a really crushing uh, finish. This queen f4 would be the, the killer move for bishop f7, if king f6. So let's have a look at this game again in overview and summary. So really, it's it's interesting for access paths to the king. You might think from a positional opening like the English, how can you possibly get an attack? like that. Well, it seems the C file is a good pivot to get to the soft spot F7, as this game demonstrates. So if you can tactically pull that off, you can get a brilliant game from it. That will cause you maybe sleepless nights for winning <laughs> instead of losing. So this C file, first there was a, a brilliant exchange tag, seemingly going into Novia trap, just winning material, but no, exchange sack. Then a rook sack, tearing open basically this diagonal, weakening some of these light squares. After queen c8, okay, we had check. Now queen e6, let's answer this question. On queen e6, what would have happened here? Would this have been a useful defense? Let's just engine check this one. In this position, the engine likes actually knight takes e5 here. Knight takes e5. So say queen takes, knight takes. We have a lot of compensation for the exchange, to say the least. These bishops look absolutely gorgeous. Knight b6 looks pretty strong. 
Let's give an example. Rook e7, rook b6. It's like plus three for white in this position. White has got a lot of pawns now for this. One, two, three, four. White is three pawns for the exchange. And if the black knight dares to move, of course, c6 is going to drop. So say a4, king g2, It's it looks like torture. d4, it looks it's just going to get worse and worse. There's adequate material uh, for what's what's been sacrificed. So that explains a bit that one about queen e6. So in the game, we saw king h8, and now just leaving the rook, you know, the advantage of queen b3 would have been to protect the rook. But Mikhail is proving he doesn't need that advantage. He's leaving the rook and pre with knight h4. Just drawing the king onto this access path across the light squares which have been weakened. So bishop e4. It's very difficult for black to escape this. Look at these pieces huddled over here. These bishops are doing a fine job. This one in particular. These two diagonals are key and instrumental in this attack. So bishop d6. Check. check. So g6 was played because knight f7 looks absolutely devastating otherwise. Check. check and now this final bit of devastation bishop takes h6 so a true king's crusher game Mikhail gets uh, my king's crusher award <laughs> for today's master game instructed master game classic master game which we don't see too many of even in the memorial event there wasn't too many amazing hacks like this hack attacks from a positional basis though it makes it all the more surprising comments or questions on youtube thanks very much